would like to welcome Nimesh Bhatt. Nimesh has uh, over nine years of experience in the testing industry. Within these nine years of overwhelming time, he got the right set of circumstances to work on web, mobile, and desktop applications. He is an automation lead at Paul Mason Consulting. Nimesh would be speaking on Device Farm, a platform which cultivates mobile devices. To know more about him and to see his video interview, please check out the link below. Over to you, Nimesh. Thank you so much. Thank you. OK, uh, hi, everyone. And uh, let me just quickly share my screen. Here we are. I'm just hoping that you guys are able to see it. Yes, so we can see. Yes, Nimesh. Okay. There you go. OK. Um, Let's quickly start, let's crack on. Um, the device farm, the platform which cultivates the mobile devices. So uh, here we are going to talk about a farm, a farm which you know uh, basically uh, gives you a number of devices rather than the crop, the actual agriculture one farm. So we will talk more about what exactly it is. Uh, moving on to the agenda that what we are going to cover within this session is, um, what is device farm and um, how device farm actually works, um, followed by the device farm terminology, which actually you know gives you a heads up on how you know integrate the device farm and uh, the terminology, basically a few of the steps which you know helps you to ease your life with the device farm. Why device farm is required? What is the importance of it? And um, how you can integrate the device farm with your automation project which where we will cover common steps to, you know, um, how you can get started with the AWS and uh, some of the, you know, uh, important steps that you have to perform in order to integrate the device farm with your automation spread. Cool. So, uh, and yes, of course, followed by the Q&A. So what exactly the device farm is? So um, I would say uh, device farm again, uh, one of the fascinating cloud service of AWS, which you know, gives you the access of numerous mobile devices placed on a cloud. And uh, when we have uh, the word cloud comes, uh, there is another associated word being an adjective comes as well, which is a virtual. So uh, is the cloud devices are the real devices or or they are virtual devices. So uh, my primary goal with this session is to break the myth that the cloud devices are not real devices. And uh, I have a supporter, I have a supporter to answer this question and uh, which is none other than the VPS. Uh, I think many of you, uh, I think uh, might have used the VPS, uh, you know, which provides you the, you know, a dedicated private resources uh, on a physical server with multiple users. So basically, a uh, virtual private server is a virtual machine, which is a program that runs on a top of a physical server. Are you getting my point? You might be able to imagine yourself, you know, you might have seen a server room in your organization or somewhere else, or you can imagine that there is a specific server room and there are tracks where, you know, uh, resources are there, the storages are there, and they all are connected with one or two or multiple physical servers upon which everything is running. So likewise, over here, thousands of, I mean, thousands of uh, physical devices with hundreds of server machine stores and being maintained under observation by device form. So that is how it, you know, uh, 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 give you a brief idea how exactly it looks like. To cover that, before that, what we will see that, uh, what exactly the device farm is. Uh, one would say that a cloud service hosted on an Amazon service as we discussed. Uh, we could say that uh, a platform which, you know, allows you to test our application, or you could say that, uh, you know, a service which gives you a number of devices, again, a physical phones and the tablets which are hosted on a cloud. Or you can say that uh, uh, it allows you to, you know, automate your, automation scripts which you want to run it on a physical devices or a mobile automation scripts that you want to run on a devices. So that's how the AWS device from we can you know uh, describe in a, in a in a multiple ways. Again uh, as we discussed is that is a cloud hosted devices are really actual devices and as I said uh, like VPS over here on a device farm as well 
a thousand of physical uh, you know devices with the hundred of server machine stores and being maintained under one observation which is done by the device farm and they look like this i mean they have you know a track uh, a specific rack where they i'm just giving you a one you know uh, imagination point that uh, likewise the you know the server room where the, all the storage with the server machine is located same way i'm just giving you one imagination just by looking at this picture where uh, you know hundred and thousands of mobile devices are clubbed together they are you know associated with the different server machines and they are able to you know get connected so this is how it looks like so device farm are you know maintaining a lab uh, where they have connected real devices the way you can see it over here on a device uh, on an image that on their devices on their servers so in the background what is happening uh, that server is the point of contact uh, to the device farm users so basically what is happening all the users are connected through those servers actually and the uh, devices which are attached with this, those servers, the users can access those devices. So basically device farm users get connected to the, those servers and can access the real devices which are connected to the servers. And yes, it is not just finished here. The team is not just you know, uh, connecting the devices, but they are maintaining, upgrading, uh, basically monitoring as well. And, uh, the, the way we nurture our mobile devices, the same thing that they are doing. They are, you know, charging it, uncharging it. They make sure that the connectivities and everything is there. They make sure that they get upgraded uh, periodically. So they have, you know, uh, developed the software to monitor all those things. And it gives, you know, to give attention to all those devices. So basically, uh, this is a farm that I want to you know, explain rather than the actual farm we can imagine from the agriculture. So when we look uh, from the hardware perspective, or you can say that a network perspective, the major challenge would be uh, to make the device available 24 by 7 available with enough power. Each device needs to be charged or recharged in a timely manner, as I said. Uh, the way we you know charge or recharge our devices our own devices they are also making sure that it gets charged and recharged in a timely manner so that it you know uh, do not get deactivated or do not you know uh, user do not get to see it unavailable at any moment other than the power again the very important thing comes into the picture is the internet connectivity is really a crucial aspect you can imagine does the one rag that you are able to see it over here, but thousands of rags or hundreds of rags over there. And you can imagine that all the device needs a connectivity. So they are using a dozens of Wi-Fi networks and to make sure that it provides the constant connectivity, constant connectivity to their connected real devices. And as you could see over here, that all the devices are really, really connected with the wired networks, though they are for the charging, but yes, uh, through Wi-Fi, they make sure that it always gets connected and it always gets available for the user. And as I mentioned, uh, to do that, uh, to do this monitoring, they have you know uh, created a software, software for monitoring uh, them through the softwares. The softwares are constantly checking the health and the state of each real device is 24 by 7. Tremendous effort in maintaining this many real devices take, you know, uh, hefty amount of efforts and that's when it generate a pool which gives us excess of number of real devices without even you know buying them uh, to run our automation test cases on them so they make sure that it clubs in a in a one pool and it allows us to you know uh, one a user can absolutely access all those devices yes it's uh, they provide us a pool where you know is having a number of devices it's it's a, it's the user who wants to you know choose the number of devices from the pool, whether they can all the devices or you know the number of devices as per the requirement of it, and they you know get started running their automation scripts on their selected devices. Okay, moving on to the next uh, 
AWS is also famous for its complicated flow, uh, you know, getting started. And to help you guys uh, uh, on that, I'll show you uh, on what terminology uh, that exactly the AWS device form works and how you can execute your steps, how you can execute your test on the device form. So uh, basically, uh, we're going to have a device pool. Device pool is nothing but a cluster, a cluster of devices, uh, which is having uh, you know, the number of devices, the number of physical devices with uh, similar you know, model or similar specification or sometimes a different specifications as well. So they gives us a pool, which is having all the physical devices, as I see the cluster, which is having a lot many devices upon which we need to cherry pick those devices. Then a uh, job, job is nothing but uh, the request that we are, you know, doing to device farm uh, to, you know, execute our automation test scripts. The metering, metering, I'm uh, not talk about much because it's it's from the pricing perspective. So you can absolutely go on a AWS device farm and check the pricing of uh, the device from how you know it, it charge you. Uh, basically, it charge uh, the way you use it, uh, the number of amount, the number of minutes you use it. It gives you you know uh, the charging. But yes. Uh, the very good thing that the AWS device form is providing is again, AWS provides a one year free subscription. So for a one year, you can absolutely use it a couple of things, not the entire thing. Uh, with the device form, you, you will get a thousand minutes free to run your mobile automation test cases. So you, you will get a hefty amount, you know, room around the device farm and look into it, how good it is and how well you can utilize it. So Within this thousand minute, you can absolutely do a certain amount of testing on the device form. But yes, uh, within this free uh, you know, registration, you will get only three devices on each platform and on uh, Android and iOS. They just give you the three free devices, but yes, later on you can absolutely buy. So this is from the metering perspective. Project, um, I would say a one umbrella under which everything comes in, say device pool or job or our run or test or our project, everything. So we need to create a, a workspace, a project within the device farm under which all those things comes in. Report, yes, uh, one of the key factor of our you know test execution where you will get to see what exactly has been done. You can absolutely time travel back and check what has happened throughout the execution so that a report comes into the picture and yes run um, the test pack that you want to run so basically again a one service that we are requesting to the device form to run our automation test case followed by the session okay so here is one interesting thing so whatever we talk about or whatever uh, we are going to talk about is absolutely for automating our automation script our mobile automation script on a device farm basically we are not you know uh, there will be no manual intervention when the execution is happening but what if what if we want to test our test our application manually so here comes the session so aws device farm also provides you you know uh, a service where you can install the application on the real device on the physical device of the which are there on a cloud AWS device from cloud you can install the application over there and you can test the application manually rather than automation apart from that a suit suit is nothing but a cluster cluster of again a uh, number of tests and the runs which you can execute followed by the test is that so that's basically the, the automation script that we are going to execute on the device form. Cool. Following and understanding this terminology will surely make you, you know, make your stay very easy with the device form. And uh, okay, before I you know move on to how you can you know run your test script on a device form, uh, would like to talk about uh, uh, why it is required you know to run your uh, application or the mobile automation test scripts on a you know number of devices or on a different devices uh, which is having a different specification or uh, uh, the different uh, platforms so what exactly why uh, it is required to run so uh, 
it is it is absolutely not you know common for you know it is absolutely uncommon to see uh, you know the new devices with the new specification new ui features comes into the market now and then we have seen uh, you know enormous you know uh, 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 escalation in terms of looking at the ui and the specification that we have seen so far uh, in in last decade we have seen a tremendous growth in the ui front uh, be it a web or a mobile and this goes you know uh, on a very very larger scale so uh, to, to to make sure that our automation script works uh, alongside all those changes we absolutely require the number of devices to test upon and uh, it is absolutely tremendously you know uh, painful for the organization or an individual to you know buy all those devices because uh, we could see that though the scale and the upgradation has happened uh, in the ui part and from the physical uh, you know appearance of the mobile devices but at the same time uh, the prices are also escalated a lot so just to you know minimize uh, those costings and in everything uh, device farm is giving us you know a good opportunity where you can leverage the devices that the aws device farm is having for you know our uh, perspective for our use only for a shorter of a shorter amount of time and just leave the device back to the device farm and we do not have to worry about it we do not have to you know uh, buy those devices for our execution so running our automation script on a different devices, which actually allows you, which actually gives you a confidence that your automation script works with everything, with the different specification, be it, you know, uh, the current generation devices or, uh, you know, few of the older generation devices with the lower operating system uh, platform. So you can make sure that it runs not just running the uh, automation script on the different devices gives you a confidence but it shows that it, it show you that how robust your automation script is so this is the reason why you know nowadays we are you know uh, running our mobile automation test scripts on a different devices and why all organization approach um, the running of the automation scripts on our different devices rather than you know following the one dedicated one cool now uh, let's talk about the actual mechanism. How you can you know uh, set up uh, the AWS device farm in your uh, automation project. So I'm going to uh, show you a few of the steps, the twelve Surya Namaskar steps. I just got <laughs> that you need to follow those twelve steps, and you can absolutely you know integrate your device, uh, your your automation script with the device farm. Starting with a very simple log into AWS device form, you have to absolutely log in. Once you log in, you need to create one IAM user. So basically, once you are entering into the uh, AWS device form, it is required to create one IAM user and you have to give the permission, uh, the access of the device form. So basically, here comes uh, some of the complicated feature of AWS, where you know gives you a little bit of hesitance at how exactly it works. But yes. It is having a good charm over, you know, when you have, when you're working with a different team, when you're working with a team where, you know, you will have to deal with number of people. So this users and this access gives you a very good chance, you know, um, give access to a certain amount of people for certain things. And uh, you can basically create a small clusters where one cluster is having certain access and the another cluster is having certain access. So those access things will absolutely maintain over here. The next thing is create a new project on a device form. So basically, as I mentioned in the terminology, you need to create one workspace over there. I'll show you a pictorial view of it, how you can create a project and uh, where you know everything comes into a picture. The next thing is a project ARN. So basically, when you create a new project, a ARN will get generated, a project ARN, which you need to you know, bind in your script. That's it. This is, I would say, a gate pass for you, along with along with the project ARN, a AWS access key and a secret access key. These three things are actually access for your automation script to get into the device form. And that you absolutely need to you know, integrate in your automation script. Once it is integrated, uh, you need to add a service file in your automation project. So service file, do not worry about how exactly you can develop the service file. AWS itself is providing you a service file. You just need to clone it in your 
uh, automation skill with such. So basically what this service form will do. So uh, this ARN, this uh, AWS access key and the secret key, along with that, this is a carryout for you, the service file, which allows you to you know, drive your automation script onto the device form. Moving on to the next, uh, the AWS device, uh, the AWS configuration file. So basically the configuration file is nothing but the triggering point from where your automation will actually start, uh, which actually allows you to, you know, uh, it will start integrating your automation script, uh, your automation project with the device one. And next is create run. Again, once you create a project, as I say, uh, one umbrella, which having all those things, the AR and access key, service file and configuration file. And then after you create a run, basically you are requesting, again, you are requesting the device pump to, you know, give you an area where you can absolutely execute your test device, your test cases, your mobile automation test cases on the devices that device farm is providing. Then after a wizard comes into the picture where you need to follow a couple of steps where uh, starting with uploading your mobile application, be it APK or IP. You need to upload your application on the device farm and followed by the zip, which containing your test. So here, uh, just focus over here more that whatever the test script that you have written, you need to zip it. You need to zip your entire project and you need to upload it onto the device farm. And then you need to select the devices. It allows you to select the devices from the list, from the pool, I would say, and then you can start to run. So that's this 12 steps actually helps you very simple steps, yet uh, a lot many other things that you need to work uh, within that. It is just the higher view of, uh, you know, just giving you a higher view that how you can exactly, you know, integrate the device from with, the, uh, with your automation project, but yes, Again, the project itself is really very good. When you create a project within that umbrella, within that workspace itself, it gives you everything. So you do not have to worry about the other thing rather than the project. Within that project itself, you will get to see everything and which helps you to manage your test to run on the AWS device from devices. A pictorial view, just a uh, few of the you know screenshots I have managed to get over here. You could see that once you are into the device form, you will get to see the screen from where a button you will get to see on the right corner that a new project with a from which allows you to create a project. I already have created one. Uh, I have given a Pandora box, and as you could see that a couple of minutes uh, which were free, I already have utilized. But yes, uh, as I mentioned, a thousand minutes you will get to see and you can absolutely room around uh, within the device form. This is once you are into the project, you will get to see that uh, the execution so far that has happened, it allows you to create a new run. Uh, so basically a request that you are generating for the AWS device form that you want to execute your test. And once you create, once you start creating your run, it will show you a wizard where you need to select, uh, where you need to upload your APK or IP file, followed by the zip, uh, the zip of your test that you have written. And uh, you need to select the devices. That's it. You can absolutely start running your test cases. Once the uh, once the execution gets finished, as I said, with the free uh, with the free uh, you know registration, you will get an access of three devices. So these are the three devices. Of course, I have ran it on just an Android, so you will get to see the Android devices. But yes, if you are running it on a iOS device, you will get uh, to see the stack where you will get to see the test cases ran on our iOS devices. When you open any of this execution, you will get to see you know the complete log where uh, you will able to see the screenshots, you will able to see the, all the logs. And of course, a video which captures throughout the execution, you can play it and you will get to see that what has happened, what sort of actions has, uh, you know, take place when you were running your automation scripts on your application. So the thorough debug, you can absolutely get to see through the video and of course, the screenshots and the logs, it will absolutely help you out. So this is how you can absolutely integrate. And uh, I think uh, we are at the end of this session. Cool. Happy to take the questions, if any.
me just open the stop share. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and looking into the chat. Okay, a uh, couple of questions as I could see. What if there are multiple fields for a single step? Do we get, oh, okay. I think those are not for me. Yes, no questions as of now, Nimesh. This is a good session so far. Just let's wait for a couple of minutes. Yep, sure. Sure, Nimesh, it was an excellent session. Uh, thank you so much for doing it. Awesome indeed. So guys, any questions for Nimish? So Nimish, when we talk about this device farm uh, and you explained that, um, are there any other competing ways of doing it? Obviously one is that you showed and maybe there are others. So can you also let us know what would be your best way to do it? What is your opinion to choose the best one? Uh, well, uh, so apart from device pump, uh, there are absolutely a couple of services uh, available in the market, which, you know, gives you uh, the same sort of services that uh, device pump gives. But uh, again, why I'm fascinated uh, with the device pump, because nowadays people are leveraging a lot many services of AWS. Rather than, you know, uh, going somewhere out of the AWS and, you know, acquiring other services, Let's have something, everything, you know, within one cluster, utilize all the services of the AWS, be it, you know, the uh, ES3 module or any other services, um, you know, um, it could be a lot many services that AWS device farm and one of the service device, uh, device farm, you know, uh, it actually cluster everything in a single platform rather than, you know, rooming around for, you know, uh, going for the different services for uh, your entire software development cycle. So mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons why I am more fascinated with the device pump. But yes, as I said, uh, a couple of other, uh, you know, uh, services available in a market, which, you know, gives a healthy competition to the device pump. Mm -hmm. But yeah. is, is, the, is GCP or Azure, do have do they have something comparable or is it only on the AWS that we have? Uh, no, uh, I think AWS, uh, do have you know uh, they have a capability for you know running the web application web application automation but yes uh, as far as i know aws doesn't provide such a cloud where you know they are giving a pool of devices mm -hmm. you can absolutely integrate it to mm -hmm. the azure or yeah. AWS somewhere but yes i think mm -hmm. we have uh, other platforms as well who wanted to explore more about the cloud devices like we have vcloudy and browser stack and even head spin there are many other people provide this kind of services mm. but again it's uh, it fully depends on the business needs and even uh, we can explore uh, there are open source tools are there maybe uh, based on the project needs they can select that as well through that yes absolutely good i think a wonderful session um, any questions friends any any questions that you there is one question i think which we see from priya can yeah. we use device form for all types of mobile application or it has any limitations as well? Uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, you can absolutely test your native or hybrid application on the device form. It gives you, you know, uh, both ways. You can absolutely convert your application, uh, keep it as a native, or you can absolutely convert your application into the web view and absolutely you can automate there as well. Awesome. And when we talk about uh, this specific uh, thing, awesome stuff that you guys are doing, have you using it for some clients and you did you face any specific challenges? Uh, yes, again, uh, as I said, AWS is absolutely you know, uh, famous for some of its uh, complicated uh, you know, configuration steps. And uh, that was uh, one of the you know, thing I absolutely felt that it is really difficult to manage, but yes, Along with that complication, it gives you a lot many facilities, as I said, as I mentioned earlier, that it allows you to give you access to a specific group of person. So there are a lot many things that AWS, uh, AWS device from itself is providing a lot many other services. 
uh, you can absolutely give a access to a number of uh, person to just for you know executing the test cases you can give access to a number of person to you know uh, go to create run and everything so basically this access and permission things will fascinate me a lot uh, when we are working in a group when we are working in a team so you can uh, you know uh, restrict the people for doing a certain job so that was uh, a key thing that uh, i actually got attracted and get lot of very nice thank you so there is one last question that we can take and then probably varshita can do the thank you side so there is a question here can devices in device form replicate exact real devices or we have some limitation uh no so um, in a metering thing i i didn't mention that many things but yes uh, device form is having uh, you know a different services and uh, different pricing uh, categories where uh, you can absolutely they are not replicating but they are giving you the access of the real devices and some of the pricing factors some of the type of uh, you know device form accesses where you can absolutely ask the device form to you know uh, provide you the devices based upon your specification so if you have a specification that you want to you know having a android or ios devices with this many specifications you can absolutely do that okay great thank you so much uh, varshita can you share the uh, thank you slide and we would like to really thank you nimesh it was wonderful session it was pleasure it was pleasure yeah. thank you so much varshita varshita are you there or namita are you there yes i'm uh, presenting sure yes yes all right great thank you so much nimesh it's uh, indeed been a pleasure to have you guys right.